So hello everybody, and uh, today obviously is a few days after the release of the recent article I wrote, which had, uh, let's say, a mixed opinion on it, and uh, of course there was a few uh, comments that, that were arguing about modern tanks, and uh, hopefully this video will be able to clear your minds on modern tanks and some of the common uh, let's say mistakes uh, most people tend to make when comparing tanks. Uh, first of all, uh, this is actually a Type 99. Uh, you might be wondering why am I using Type 99? Well, it is it, it is a fairly large model as you can see, four alloys. So uh, since I bought this like a year ago, um, I think, and also this is a tank with some ERA uh, plates on it. So we can use this as an easier way of describing it rather than showing you pictures on the internet as background. So I decided to show you this tank. So what do you need to know about modern tanks is that modern tanks is grouped in generations, let's say. Uh, currently we're talking about third gen, but um, Japan of course leading it with the Type 10 calling it uh, the, the fourth gen. But uh, we need to see what it does. And also recently the Armata came out. but. Again, the, the the philosophy of tanks still, I think, will play a big role in later stage of the, um, let's say, 20, 21st century or so. Of course, we all put the budget now on aircraft and ships and all that sort of things. I think tank is still uh, very important uh, for a number of reasons. First, in order to, to conquer a land, let's say, you, in order for you to capture a ground and hold it, uh, you need infantry, you need army, and now the army always will need a combat uh, machinery um, for them to to use it as a platform. And that platform, no matter what name you put it, uh, it is, after all, something that will uh, that will give the crew, the army, the capability of fighting on the ground, sustaining fire, and of course returning fire. And that battle station, no matter what you name it as, it will always have the features of a tank. So therefore, tanks, in my opinion, would not, uh, of course, be phased out. It is only a matter of how you want to put put it. Let's, let's put it this way. How will tanks develop in the future is a question. It's not a question of if tank will disappear. Uh, no, in my opinion. If any army that needs to attack on the ground, they need... A platform for the soldiers to to be able to fight in, and that thing cannot be armored fighting vehicles. Um, tanks are just dominant in that sense, and a lot of you, a lot of you probably wonders why is tanks even considered maybe uh, maybe obsolete in the next few decades. Maybe we won't need it again. Well, people say that in let's say some of the new wars tanks have proven to be very vulnerable against let's say uh, urban area urban combat combat since you know people can just get uh, RPG um, or guided missiles of some kind like javelin or something and knock a tank out and it really proves tanks aren't really worth it when you can just knock it out with a single round a uh, single missile let's call it but I think it's a matter of how you want to improve your tank to make it better than before. So the Type 99, as we can see here, has many features of a common modern tank. It has features similar to the Abram, it's got features similar to the T90, so I'm just going to use this because this is a mixture of pretty much all the tanks. Uh, modern tanks in service so let's talk about this thing first of all you you might have seen loads of bricks uh, brick looking things uh, on tanks and they are actually called ERA they are explosive reactive uh, armor uh, which basically does what it, it says on the tin the shell comes in and this would explode outward so we kind of would neutralize the incoming shell, the effect of it has on the tank, and uh, of course losing it, losing its penetration uh, by blasting it in the opposite direction. Uh, just common sense, really. But uh, I want to give you a bit of history behind it. 
the first idea came actually, I think, from the Israelis. Uh, don't call me on that, but what happened is during the war against uh, the Arabic countries, let's call it that, the, the Israelis were penetrating the Russian T-62s and etc. Those sort of Russian Soviet style tanks, but once they've penetrated the the armor, they realized that the tanks didn't really sustain enough internal damage. So the Israelis didn't really like that idea. Uh, that their shell didn't do that much much damage to the interior and what a shell does is really it penetrates and it splits and would kill the crew but the Israeli found out that their shells didn't really do that much damage in some sense so they did an investigation the investigation concluded that it is the explosion of the inside of the tank that caused the uh, the explosion inside the, um, the ammunition inside uh, got blown up and the ammunition would cause pressure inside the turret and then the penetrating shot would then be significantly reduced in terms of its own damage so the Israelis came up with this idea why don't we strap explosives on the outside of tanks and that explosive of course will explode but towards outside towards the incoming uh, object and of course so do a cancelling neutralization uh, method of uh, reducing the the kinetic energy uh, the incoming round has, and that is quite clever. Um, as we're going to see, uh, most modern tanks, as you can see, has tons of this type of uh, uh, this sort of bricks around the tanks, and um, Russians um, or every single country pretty much uses them in their modern tanks. Uh, but sometimes you don't see it on American Abrams, but of course uh, they did. They they could be upgraded, uh, but most some pe pictures of Abrams they don't they don't have such ERA. Um, so after that, we need to talk about some of the, the the features which makes a tank third generation. Why is it ahead of the first and second gen? Now, the the thing is, you have a fire control system. Originally, the fire control systems were very simple. Uh, World War Two ones were simple. Then you got the uh, the after World War Two, where you start to see tanks like the T sixty two emerge in the sixties, where they had uh, stabilization on the guns. Um, in many sense, they stabilize it horizontally, sometimes vertically. But the third gen really does it better and. The Challenger, for example, in Britain, th th those things, I think it was Britain first who started to have this uh, gun stabilization where it, there is actually a uh, computer and uh, system inside that will actually measure out how how much this tank moves up and down and then just compensate by just r maintaining the, the gun at the same exact position was even if your tank is rocking around this gun will always be pointing at the at the target and that is very very good because you can now run at 60 km and fire on the move and still hit the target and imagine you have to say drive a T62 against let's say a Challenger 2 now the T62 has to stop aim fire and it could go anywhere but however the new Third gen tanks like Challenger 2 can fire on the move, and that will increase your survivability significantly since you're moving. Uh, now, the, the the Type 10 of the Japanese, they actually have this new thing they they showcased in one of their military exercises that their their Type 10 apparently can turn in S S uh, forms like a snake, and yet the gun can still fire while it's doing the S turns. Now that is very good because now we're showing that tanks can in fact fire even turning and of course hitting the target reliably but the usefulness of that um, is, is, is a bit of a improvement in my opinion but again you, you might not really want to turn anyway but again it, it's better to have it than not having it so another thing is defense defense capability is uh, very key. As I said, the ERAs, uh, there's currently a few generations of ERAs, 
uh, available now. And of course, the the best ones are uh, the newest gen and defense. First of all, you're talking about the let's say the smoke dischargers here. Uh, mo some of you might not know what smoke dischargers are, so they are the little nest looking things. They fire the smoke out, and the smoke will basically explode around the tank, creating a cloud. So this tank can actually uh, disappear like a shadow. Um, that is uh, fitted in uh, a lot of tanks, and even in like the old days. So it's not really that inno innovative, but creating smoke. There's two ways of doing it on a tank: smoke discharges here. Or you can do it on the engine. Some tanks have the features where they can even make the engine you know, like emit plenty of uh, smoke by doing various methods. We're not going to go into that. So that's one capability is not to get seen. Now Poland and England are known for its stealth tanks. Uh, they, the two countries, have all developed stealth tanks. I know B. Um, BAE uh, designed one. It is basically the tank looks quite different from what you see now, uh, but they will actually make the tank look like whatever environment is behind it. And uh, if the enemy target, enemy patrols, whatever use uh, infrared, they scan the area. The tank will just look like the background. So I think that's pretty cool because now if you don't get this spotted then you have a better survivability than most other tanks and that is uh, really important in my opinion and of course now a lot of countries also design their tanks in modular ways now what I mean by modular is that the tank can be easily repaired and also maintained now as you can see this model here type 99 this is not the newest model of the type 99 but just showcasing so you can see here it doesn't have the the ERA and stuff like that uh, but then you can easily fit them on. I'm saying, for example, the turret need to be removed. Now, that if that's modular, you can just take that off and place a new one on. Now, if if it was made using the traditional method, then some of the things won't really uh, work out that well. Let me just put this on. For example, the welded ones and all of them, it would be a mess trying to fix them. But if you have a modular cases then it's very well way easier to fix it. It's like having a battery. If you have an integrated battery it's it's really hard for you to take it out, right? But if you have one of those phones where you take the the back off, if the battery's broken you just take it out and put a new one in. It's a bit like that. And uh, you want the tank to be modular since uh, it will be good for your maintenance and uh, things like that. And uh, thirdly um, most modern tanks have countermeasure systems and now depending on what tank it is they have different ones so I'm just going to go over a few of the major ones so uh, there's laser ones where uh, let's say I'm not sure which one is the laser I think this could be the laser one correct me if I'm wrong but there's something called uh, the laser blinding system almost it, it would fire the laser at personnel or, or burn the optics and change the wavelength of the the enemy optics and therefore the enemy rangefinder wouldn't find target their people's eyes would be burnt and um, just causing all sort of trouble and that is the key about this sort of defense it is people claim that it's better than killing somebody so mm, the military has got their own point of arguing that they should use laser technology on their tanks um, rather than killing someone but who knows uh, now some sometimes you get you see a machine gun on top like this but uh, a lot of countries decided to upgrade their tanks with urban combat capability like you see in a lot of games like battlefield so battlefield what you get is you actually inside a turret you actually are inside the tank but you're almost like controlling the, the machine gun how it works is that instead of having a machine gun on the outside uh, they would just have like a machine on it that can spin up and down aim at targets so your crew doesn't have to be exposed in urban combat and that is good because if you're out a sniper can take you out it's simple as that 
so the machine guns depending on you know where your tank is designed, which country it is, and whether if it is designed for let's say urban fights, because urban fights normally requires those sort of turrets, since going through a dense populated city would be very dangerous if your crew are exposed outside. Now there's another type of defense is that the countermeasure will actually cause the incoming missile to let's say change target so the missile is coming in from this direction and it would just get guided away um, by countermeasures. Uh, there's detectors on the tank um, I think this is a one of them is a detector I'm not sure which one uh, the detector will be able to detect any object whether it is coming the computer inside will be able to within milliseconds I believe to calculate whether if that object will be able to hit your tank and if it is going to hit then this computer inside will actually calculate just when will the target target uh, missile or shell coming towards your tank will hit your tank so what happens is you get the system automatically detecting incoming shells and if it is going to hit your tank then the reactive armors uh, would actually blow outward would actually sort of neutralize the incoming shells like that and uh, significantly reduce the damage your tank is going to take that is quite high tech uh, the Israelis are known for that one uh, you can of course check that on that if you want and um, again just very briefly we're going to talk about the the capability of engines now a lot of you compare tanks with engines like I don't understand it's just that people say oh look we have a 1500 horsepower engine oh we have a 1300 horsepower engine well on number wise you would think that 1500 is better but that is true and not true depending on which way you want to say it uh, let's just give you a third person perspective now more horsepower means more fuel needed so that means you you need a better supply of fuel now if you're fighting in the condition you might not always get enough fuel and then you see maybe let's say a tank with 1200 horsepower will use less fuel than the 1500 horsepower engine okay it might accelerate slower it might have less maneuverability but then at the cost of greater need of supply so it all depends on your national let's say national background uh, and also your your combat designs what what is it where is it designed for you can't simply compare tanks when you don't actually know let's say if 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 russian tanks are designed to fight in the russian winter and then you bring a let's say argentine battle tank from india the argentine battle tank is not going to work well compared to the t90 in Russian winter so you can't really compare them um, in that way because the different countries have different stra strategies in terms of war for war uh, countries that have high altitude countries which are very large uh, that have different terrains then they obviously need different uh, a tank that is capable of enduring all of that if your country is like let's say uh, like Vietnam then the ground is quite soft you, you need a tank that is lighter than the ones you would have on the desert for example or on normal normal roads um, it might depend on the bridges your country has your country if they if the bridges are strong ones then obviously they can hold tanks up to 60 70 tons but if the bridge are all small bridges then obviously a, a, a 30 to 40 ton tank will be better and that is pretty much why uh, let's say the PLA has Type 96 and Type 99. Type 96 is the budget version. Type 99 is the better version. This version I got here, I bought, is the Type 99 2009 Parade version. Now, there is actually a new one already out. Um, it doesn't look like this. It's way bigger in size. Uh, it has capabilities, I believe, better than this. So a lot of you might compare the, ca the calibers of guns. And... Uh, a lot of you might be mistaken by the, the, the data provided by many documentaries and such. I would just like to emphasize that caliber, in my opinion, or in, my, in my research, I've concluded 
that 125 millimeter guns are not necessarily better than 120 millimeters used by most NATO tanks. However, there is the fact that 125 millimeter guns has, I believe, uh, it was 15 or 20 percent more capacity. People with good maths can calculate that. But with only five millimeter more, you can pack a lot more gunpowder inside the shell. So therefore, increasing the the power of your rounds, and that way you can get more penetration. So it kind of has good thing and bad things, but um, in my opinion, the one two five should be a bit better. But it all depends on what round you fire as well. For example, Saddam's tanks are obviously not going to have your, your depleted uranium shells. And if you, if you compare, okay, Saddam's T seventy two one. 125 millimeter gun. It's not going to be the same as the American depleted uranium fired 120 millimeter guns. It's not the same. You can't compare them. Now, comparing tanks, you need to keep things, uh, let's say, in controlled variables. They should be tested under the same circumstances. They have to be con controlled, some of them. And you can only change one independent variable uh, in that sense. So uh, I also heard a lot of people say, well, American tanks, oh, we beat the Iraqis 22-0 and all this and all that, but uh, listen to this. This is why I think you can't say that the, the Iraqi tanks are so much worse than the Abraham. Oh, they are, obviously, but there's other factors you got to take into account. Crew, the... The, the the type of ammunition they're firing, how, what is the intelligence like on both sides? So you get the Americans who's got satellite watching it. You got UAVs watching it. You got you got every single support you need in the air. If you need, if you see Saddam tanks, you, you your tank doesn't have to go in itself. It it, it can go in airstrike if it wants. And for the Iraqis, they 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 are on the other side, panicking. Okay. Where, when, when do we see the the M the M one Abrams? I want us to, to. I don't want to fight anymore. This is not a fair fight. So the you can't simply compare like that. Now, if you if you the most hot topic of of course is is Russian tanks better than American tanks or is American tanks better than Russian tanks? In my opinion, uh, Russian tanks aren't necessarily worse than the Americans. And also, it depends on a lot of other factors like production capabilities, uh, which country has better armor, which country has better defense, and uh, it's just a very uh, sophisticated. You, you can't simply say which one's better than which. Uh, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Now, the the fact that let's say the Armata, okay, the, the philosophy changed. Now they decided to have no crew inside the turret. They decided to put all the crew inside the hull. Now this will mean that the penetrating the turret may not mean killing all the crew. And that could be a, a new philo philosophy maybe other countries will borrow. Or maybe it could be a failure of a philosophy. Now tank philosophy is very important because you can have the best tank in the world but can your best tank be able to fight one against three, one against four, against another equivalent tank? If it can't, and the other country can build five times, ten times more tanks than you, then I'm afraid it doesn't really matter about quality when quality are similar, but yours is slightly better, doesn't really matter. And also there's a thing called stats. Okay, the stats of a tank may be, may be awesome, but is it reliable? Is it easy to maintain? Is it... It's just that on the battlefield there are so many different reasons why a tank can be a beat up another tank. It is not that simple. So I, I hope this video uh, have answered a lot of the common uh, common questions on the internet because people often just compare with simple stats and uh, I believe no, you, you shouldn't compare simply stats. There are other other things you gotta take into account. For example, the Russian T seventy two the Russians have obviously aren't the same as the the, the monkey models they sold it to 
uh, to the Middle East, you know, they wouldn't sell their best T-72 to the Middle East. And then you get the tank tournaments, which are held uh, in Russia, which kind of demonstrates Russian tanks and other countries' tanks, other t countries' crews. Uh, I don't think it's a fair test because, okay, Russian did have a T-72, but they did give other countries T-72 except China who brought their own Type 62A, the type, type 96, Type 96A, let's say. Uh, the, but the thing is, the Russian had an actual T-72, but was a, 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 this is what I read from the internet, so it may be reliable, it may not be, but this is what I heard. I heard the T-72 the Russian had, had a T-90 equivalent engine, so therefore, it was not a fair test, and also, the tournament didn't really t show any of the actual combat capabilities. It was just driving around the course, uh, seeing how fast it accelerates, how accurate is the gun, how accurate is the machine gun, how accurate is the guided missile on it. But it does not really showcase, let's call it, just endurance, battlefield realistic endurance they try to do their best i understand that but there are just a, a few variables that aren't really able you can't really test it unless you fight real war and hopefully this video has been entertaining and let's not have a massive argument in chat on whose country's tank is better because nobody knows until you, you know anything happens that will actually indicate it and also even if there is a uh, a, a fight between them two. There's also Air Force, you know, satellites. All of those communication related backup that has to, let's say, give the uh, give that has to have a massive influence on the the tank's capability. So I believe that the Type 96 is 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 not a comparison to the to the T72 in the tournament and. Just overall, there are so many things I have to say that take you have to take into account. Do not make bold judgments. And um, we, we, if this thing, if this video goes well, you can ask me further questions, and I can either make write an article about it, or alternatively, alternatively, uh, make another video where I can use like a tank model to show you what the tank is capable of and etc. If you got any more, uh, let's say, common questions, uh, then you can of course ask me. Um, but in my, let's just give you one extra bonus before we leave this video. Is that the smaller the tank, the easier it is to hit. Remember that. And also the lighter the tank, it might be a beneficial thing. It may not be. Uh, the lighter it is, of course, the less armor it has, and also there's a different thing called armor composition. You, you know, it, it might say mouse has 300 millimeters up front, but trust me, it might not be as good as, for example, main one of battle tanks front armor because the armor armor composition and the the amount of countermeasures, or let's say, the sort of ERA and all of them will be able to provide. A, a third gen tank with much better capability of defending itself than traditionally just thick armor tank. So uh, again, each country have different classified co uh, composite armor. So don't simply say, "Ah, oh, this one's better than this," when the data aren't even made public. So uh, also, I'm looking forward into armored warfare since there are very there are a few issues in that game where I am worried about because first of all how are you gonna get the newest information about the Armata? Are you gonna make it up or what? It is this it's hard to judge at this stage but certainly we we have to take a keep an eye on it on it. And if there's any inaccuracies please point out in the uh, comments below I'm happy to to acknowledge that and uh, we shall see you next time.